Playing Yu-Gi-Oh! can be fun and exciting. With online stores like eBay and TCG Player, duelists worldwide can obtain any card they can think of, but playing competitively can be quite the investment. Does it have to be? How difficult would it be to make a competitive deck from sealed only product? Starting our journey with three structure decks, a budget of $30 a week, and the heart of the cards, I'm going to be making a Yu-Gi-Oh! deck worthy of a regional event. Welcome to Sealed Only Yu-Gi-Oh! Soulburner Bakugan Edition. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and to Sealed Only Yu-Gi-Oh! Episode 3. Um, so, playtesting so far with the deck has been good. Um, the tournaments, I haven't been doing too bad. Uh, against the meta decks, I have a lot harder time. Um, but some of the rogue stuff I, I can kind of deal with, uh, more or less, like Blue Eyes, I didn't have a problem with. Um... There was a Felgrand deck at the last tournament um, that I just like bricked really hard on. So we're gonna get some stuff this episode to hopefully increase consistency. And with that, we are going to open some more structure decks. <laughs> um, I know uh, that it's probably a little bit cheating to get a bunch of stuff from other structure decks, but I figured, uh, I mean, with some stuff that I actually need, for the Dragon Link deck that I'm going to be building, I need the, um, where is he? We need the Draconect, and then we also need the one copy of, um, where'd it go? Galaxy Serpent. So, yeah, the three Draconects are going to come out of this. We're going to get our Galaxy Serpents. Hopefully start putting that imp to good use. Um, and then I, uh, these were actually, <clears throat> then I also picked up a, pack of Battle of Legends Heroes Revenge because these were on sale, as you can sell, sell by the sticker, for about seven bucks a piece, so I actually went a little under budget uh, this week, which is, you know, not bad. Um, so yeah, pretty sweet. Uh, I'm going to do the decks first, we're just going to kind of get through, get the stuff that we need out of them, and then we'll open the pack, edit the deck a little bit, and we will be set for the week. So let's go ahead and just do that real quick. So there we go. Uh, let's just go ahead and just open these. Uh, I know you guys have seen these probably a thousand times, um, because this structure deck has been out for a while, almost two years now. Uh, however long the links have been out, I think it's been like two years. Um, I'm just gonna open all these. I'm pretty sure all the stuff we need out of this is the, um, the Draconect. Oh crap, <laughs> I don't you guys can see that bend too bad there. Um, so that means in the future we're gonna have to actually open some more, uh, Dark Neostorm for those <sighs> Sinet Minings. Those are going to be very, very important. I don't think they're going to be getting a reprint anytime soon, so we're going to have to dig into some special editions for those, um, and hopefully we'll hold them, or if not one or two. Um, Deco Talker is actually going to be a really nice, um, nice addition to the deck. Um, not anything really else that's too good. Um, the Deco Talker is actually going to be very, very important. Oh, there we go. We got the Draconect. We have the Galaxy Serpent. Let's see what else is in here. Got a Captain. Sangin. Not gonna help us too much. <laughs> um, Battle Fader. Effect Veiler actually will be really nice because we don't have any hand traps. Um, so definitely adding the Effect Veiler will be helpful. Uh, Pot of Duality. I don't know if that's gonna be too good. Terraforming will be really good. Okay, yeah, I didn't realize that Terraforming was in this. So that's gonna be awesome. Having Boot Sector launch um, on board is just absolutely, uh, well, also hang on to the bottomless. Yeah, awesome. The, te the Terraform will help out a lot. Just having Boot Sector launch live is just so helpful. Um, bam, yeah, I think just like one of everything else. Oh no, we need the effect failures, ha ha ha. So yeah, these are gonna help help out a lot because of some of the problems I was having is I just could not turn off my opponent's abilities during their turn, so that will help out immensely. So from the structure decks, we got the three effect veilers. We've got the three Drake Connect with the one Galaxy Serpent, a copy of Decode Talker, a terraforming, and a bottomless trap hole. And then let's go ahead and open up our Battle of Legends. We need a bunch of stuff from this. Uh, the Boral Sword, 
we need a uh, copy of each of the dragons, white and black. Um, we need just some random, random other stuff from this. So this will be hopefully a good investment. Uh, Ferris, all right, awesome. I actually needed a third copy of this. Um, that doesn't help us too much in this, but we also have Water of Life, Shadal Beast, Miracle Stone, and Summon Limit. Wow, okay, so Summon Limit is also gonna be very good um, in this uh, as like a side deck card. I might, I might run one. I'm not entirely sure. I don't want to go too heavy on the traps. Um, this week I didn't see any of my mirror forces, so I might switch those out. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and find some space for these cards in the deck, and we'll, um, we should be good to go. I also uh, treated myself and got some uh, anniversary sleeves for all of my extra decks, so the Dragon Boys are looking real nice. Real nice. When we inevitably go to our tournament, we'll actually have to switch these because we're not allowed to have the um, hollow foil sleeves, which is silly when they're provided by Konami themselves. Um, so let's go ahead and find some extra deck space for the decode talker. Um, it hasn't been too helpful yet, but I don't want to take her out. Uh, the black ship came in handy a couple of times. Um, so let's see. What do we want to take out? We're down to two boro loads. I think we started with two boro loads. Um, this card has been pretty decent. Uh, you get to destroy some stuff and get some burn. Let's uh, let's go down one triple burst, or let's go down two one triple burst. Add a decode talker. Um, he will be helpful as well because uh, his effect is he gains a 500 attack for every card he points to, and then you can um, tribute one monster you control that he points to and then negate the activation. Yeah, so this will be really nice with the with the rockets because you can target one of them uh, with the effect, blow it up and still get this because it's still destroying that, and you're still tributing. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. If I'm not entirely correct, please correct me down in the description below. Um, so yeah, that is for the side deck. Definitely helpful. <laughs> Definitely helpful to have the eco talker in our arsenal now. Um, so, let me just lay this deck out real quick, and we will figure out what we're taking out. Okay, so here is the deck. We have everything kind of laid out. Tempest, um, just from a week-long standpoint, I gotta say this card is absolutely amazing. It goes super well um, with rockets. I, I think they've got some pretty tight abilities, um, and then being able to bring on Tempest is very, very nice, because you can link them away bring him back or just have a nice body on the board if need be. Some of the problems I've been having is that I run out of resources too quickly and I keep prioritizing getting rockets back onto my board at the end of the turn more so than actually um, making combos. Uh, a nice thing is with the rocket tracers you can activate a quick launcher or squib draw, use his quick effect, destroy it, and get an additional search and or um you know special summon i think yeah you can special summon a rocket from your deck yes except for rocket tracer so definitely uh definitely gonna keep him at three i think we could probably get rid of the exploder rocket he um he's all right but i haven't been able to get him off too consistently um other than that it looks like we're running everything else at two uh rocket tracer is gonna stay at three for the time being um, but we could probably afford to go down there. Um, another thing is that I have not seen Imperial Order in any of my games, but I don't want to take it out and have that be one of the cards um, that inevitably saves my back end. It seems, I mean, upon looking at it again, it seems kind of silly to have the one bottomless trap hole, but then I was thinking about it more and it might be beneficial because we can kind of pop some of those uh, troublesome link monsters that our opponent's going to be making. Or, you know, um, even if they guard dragon combo on us in the middle of it, we can kind of disturb them or interrupt their play somehow, assuming we go first. But yeah, it might it might be subbed out here, um, but we're going to we're gonna play around with it. This is going to be a very unconventional sort of uh, week. We're just going to be trying some stuff, uh, especially without being able to search the Drake Connect. Uh, we're just going to have to open it, um, and that, then we'll be able to get our combos off. Um, he's an Ib by himself. So I was thinking of just keeping it in there since, you know, that was the whole reason we got this. So we're actually going to keep the Ib 
and the side deck. The only uh, target we really have for this is the Ib, so we're gonna go ahead and just keep it in the side deck for the time being. Um, we'll just play it as another way of getting uh, two monsters on board for another Link Summon or something. She might come in handy in some way, shape, or form. Uh, her effects are not gonna be live, but I just don't want to take her out after putting the Galaxy Serpent and Drake Connect in here. So, uh, with that, I think the deck will be pretty set for this tournament. Um, we got four Boot Sector launches, which are gonna be really nice, plus another two Borrower Generators to get our monsters back. We got the Dragon Shrines to go into it still, Bottomless to, to hopefully get some rid of some trouble cards that we might run into, Effect Veilers to turn off our opponent's stuff, a Deco Talker in the extra deck to just kind of do some stuff, and a core-ish build of a side deck. So that is going to be really nice. So let's get this put back together. So while I was setting this thing back together, I realized that with the um, Galaxy Serpent now in our deck, the Guard Dragon will actually be a lot more useful. So I subbed out the Rocket Synchron for him. So we're taking this out, putting the Guard Dragon in, and we are going to play it from there. Uh, we still got Mad Tuners. We got the, um, the, Gal the Galaxy Serpent itself. We've got the uh, Rocket Tracer. He's a four with this. You know, we can make it. Um, so yeah, I, I just decided last second to do that. So let's go ahead and take it on to locals. Oh yes, that is very good. It's Alti Dengirsu. Oh shit. Oh my god. Yes, that's amazing. <laughs> Okay, so this week actually didn't go over as well as I thought it was going to. Um, we played three rounds today, uh, we lost our first two, and then won the third. There was a lot of misplaying today, um, just people not knowing, you know, how to set up or what cards do or anything, so, or remembering what stuff does turns later. Um, I'm not, like, putting anybody at fault except for my second opponent, I will, you know, kind of say this. If you are set up for a tournament, whether it's locals or any other event, if you are playing and your extra deck is not in the zone it is supposed to, you cannot go into your bag and get go into your deck box and pull out your extra deck and use it that game. That is really unfair. Um, earlier during my second round, um, I went first, or I went second, and I had a bunch of stuff set up that I could go into um, my... Uh, my booster dragon with silver rocket, pop a card from the extra deck, and then continue to go into triple burst, use my boot sector launch to get two rockets back, and um, I decided to go against that because my opponent didn't have an extra deck uh, laid out, so I was like, okay, maybe they're playing some sort of weird Shiranui like, turbo or something that just doesn't have an extra deck. Um, and then turn four, he went into his bag, grabbed his deck box, and put his extra deck on board. Um, I didn't know, you know, what to say or anything, I just kind of let it go, but I, I shouldn't have because it was just some BS. Um, and then he like, he had a set card and then activated a trap card that tributes a zombie. But when a card is set, it's not anything, it's just a set card, like it, it's a monster, but that's it. So he tried to pull some, some shenanigans on me today and I just, I couldn't get there. My first opponent was Trains and he... He did some Gustav Max to hit me for 2,000 burn damage, and then upgraded that into some other train, which with Underclock Taker made it like 6k, and then he ran into my zero attack point monster, and uh, yeah, so those those first two rounds, but that, you know, that was actually how the deck was supposed to play. My second and third opponent today just didn't know what they were doing, uh, so that was... Uh, a really big upset, you know, that, that kind of stuff. You know, I really should be taken care of earlier. I should have said something that's totally on me. And then there was like a misplay with Endymion because my third match was Pendulum Magicians and um, I was able to do some stuff. But, you know, a turn or two later, he told me I couldn't do it the specific way. So it was, it was just kind of a trash day. Um, but yeah, no, the deck I think needs to go through a big rework. I, I have an idea of what I would like to do, um, but it might take a couple weeks, so we'll slowly start doing that um, over the next like week or two. Um, we were under budget this week, so I did pick up one more Battle of Legends to hopefully get that Boral Sword. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and open this and see if there's anything else that we can add. 
before the week is over, I'm gonna go through some of the trouble cards that I've been running into, some stuff that just dead, and what my extra deck can be improved upon, um, such as which targets I go into, how often I'm really getting to specific links and everything. So we're just gonna go ahead and open this and then we will shift through our deck and figure out what else it is we can fix. And uh, I mean, I know I did that earlier in this video, but we're gonna do it again because I obviously did not <laughs> uh, plan it very well. So starting us off, we have a Dino Wrestler Panker Tops. Fantastic, this is gonna be so good in our extra or in our side deck. So awesome, we got another one of those. Um, I think that's the first one on camera. No, yeah, that is the first one uh, for the challenge that we can actually use. I pulled another one recently. Um, so then we got uh, number 76 Harmonizer uh, Grindley, uh, Arclight, Chimera, and Shadal uh, Squamata. So yeah, the Panker Tops is nice. So we got Pank we can add into the deck. Um, or the side deck at least. I'm not sure how we're gonna do that. Um, or like if one is gonna be good enough. So yeah, um, let's go ahead and look at the extra deck first and just kind of figure out. So the three Borlode Furious, I actually haven't gotten to more than one of these, if not one of them per tournament. So I'm definitely gonna probably go down, definitely probably, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so I'm probably gonna go down to either one or two of these. I just don't see three being uh, viable as much. Uh, it was doing really good for us today, but I just ran out of places to go. Uh, normal summoning the Draco Necked, making this, and just not having anywhere to go where I need it to be. So that is something that we're gonna figure out is like where we need to go. Uh, Corn was doing me pretty good. Uh, I, I, again, I ran into some shenanigans with him. Uh, I definitely like Quad Whirl at two. Uh, he's definitely gonna be taken out because I never make him. I like Booster at two. Triple Burst at one is fine. Uh, but we, yeah, we, we need to go up on the Zero Boros. Zero Boros needs to be more, and I think this is gonna be a target we're gonna start going into a lot more. Because um, he is fantastic. And if your opponent is greedy and they decide to play Pot of Desires, this thing gets an additional 2k. So that is absolutely insane. So Zero Boros is definitely gonna be um, kind of our right hand man going forward so we're gonna definitely max out on getting into that and figure out what, what combos can get us there quicker um three rocket tracers are good uh tempest was getting us there i might go down one silver rocket not two one silver rocket um maybe we might go down two one silver rocket um because i just any, anytime i saw him again with like the sheer new thing pop a card from his extra deck but i didn't think he had one and in any of the other games, I just didn't see it. Uh, but I think with Rocket Tracer, we can kind of get there and search that one if we don't open it. I mean, and even if we do, we got terraforming with the boot sector, so uh, we can get there. So yeah, I just, I think our rocket engine needs to be slimmed down and maybe we can put some other stuff in here. So next week, after we do our um, openings, we're definitely gonna be looking, taking another look at this deck and figuring out where we can improve um, and what our end board is supposed to look like. So that is actually gonna do it for us. Sorry, I just didn't get any footage at Sages. There was, it, it was just one of those days. Very frustrated by my matchup. So that is uh, actually gonna be the end of it. So thank you guys so much. I hope you are enjoying the series so far. Um, if you are, let me know down below what your highlight of this is so far. And um, subscribe if you aren't already to stay up to date with the sealed only Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, and I will see you guys next week. Hope you have a fiery day.